protect your DNA. BioPQQ can promote formation of new mitochondria. InfoWarsStore.com now, we've heard a lot about Obama's executive orders. Of course, he's going to open the border by executive order. He's going to close power stations by executive order. And now he's granted immunity from Ebola by executive order. But of course, it's not really giving people immunity physically. It's giving his corporations who are going to help him immunity from being sued if they bring Ebola back to the United States and give it to us. That's the executive order he signed last Thursday. Obama indemnifies government contractors from damages arising from importing Ebola into the United States. It indemnifies them from lawsuits that could be brought up if they import Ebola into the United States. This is, of course, a story from CNS News. They say this authority, and this is quoting from the executive order, may be exercised solely for the purpose of holding harmless and indemnifying contract contractors with respect to claims, losses, or damage arising out of or resulting from exposure in the course of performance or the contracts to Ebola. Now, they explain this by saying, if company A employee contracts Ebola while working in West Africa, brings the disease back to the United States, is not quarantined, and ends up infecting members of the general public, that company is protected from any damages arising from lawsuits by the victims. There you go. So it's the corporations that we have to be concerned about. It's the corporations that we need to open the borders for. And of course, we needed to take protective clothing from medical workers and hospitals, doctors and nurses here in the United States because we didn't want to create a general panic about a possible Ebola outbreak so that people would take precautions, have quarantines. No, we wanted to, that would, have, that would impact business. We don't want to see that happening. Now, of course, if Obama's pronouncements would work, that would have worked back in September when he said there was no chance it was going to get out in the wild just a few uh, days before we discovered that we had a patient in Texas. But at the same time that happened, of course, they were quietly purchasing about 1,600 hazmat suits. And we see over the weekend a doctor brought in on Saturday who is in the last stages of Ebola, brought into the special facility in Nebraska, yet nevertheless he died. He also, and this is, a, this is interesting because he got both a blood plasma transfusion as well as ZMAP. None of that helped him. In the final stages, there is nothing really that's going to help you. It's your immune system in the beginning that is really the determining factor, as well as keeping people hydrated with fluids. And this just underscores the importance of keeping this out of the country. But of course, that's what they are not going to do. They are not going to help you with any immunity. It's only your immune system because they are going to open the borders and even bring people in in the last stages of the disease. But of course, it's even worse. Once they have a pandemic get started, we will probably become the test subjects for these corporate pharmaceuticals. They're talking now about how health officials in the U.S. are calling for testing that will require some patients to just get a placebo instead of even the experimental treatment. And, of course, the uh, director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases says, many of these drugs, I assure you of this, several will turn out to be toxic and not effective. And, of course, none of this would be a part of the globalist agenda for population control, would it? Sterilizing people culling the population. Recent events in India last week shed a lot of light on this, and it continues today. After the deaths of 13 women last week who underwent sterilization operations, we now learn that the drug, the antibiotic that they were giving them post-operation had rat poisoning in it. It turns out that this doctor who was doing these abor abortions did abortions in just a few hours on 83 women. And he said he was being made a scapegoat for a controversial family planning scheme. You notice that he says it's a controversial family planning scheme. As they point out, forced sterilization, sterilization operations is what passes for family planning in India. Irrevocable sterilization. They say it's one of the most popular methods of family planning in India. Many state governments organize these massive camps where mainly poor rural women can undergo the usually straightforward procedure usually straightforward. He did 83 of these in just a few hours. Human Rights Watch has said that health workers in India are coercing women into getting sterilized because they are under pressure to meet informal targets. Informal targets. Listen, the only thing that's informal about that, they know that they have targets that they need to reach. That's agreed upon. 
The reason they call it informal is because they're not going to put it in writing. And understand that it's the same attitude that our government has as our corporations, because it's the same corporations that are trying to exploit people in both the United States as well as in India that are behind this globalist population reduction scheme that involves mass culling of the people who are alive and massive sterilization and abortions. That's what's behind all of this. Well, stay with us right after the break. We're going to talk about you lie five years later. Remember when that happened in the uh, Congress? He's been vindicated in spades. Stay with us. We're going to be right back, and we're going to have a special report from Ferguson. Stay with us. Another major health threat, this one in Toledo, Ohio, where everybody in the entire city has been told not to drink the water. Ohio's governor declaring a state of emergency. Did you know that the average person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water at home every single day? If there's a water emergency, will you be prepared? Panicked residents forming long lines throughout the day. Well, here at a supermarket in Toledo, you can see the shelves empty where water once was. To stay safe and healthy during a crisis, you must must have access to safe, clean water. Water which will not be available at your local grocery store. There's a mad dash on right now to stock up on supplies. The ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system is a must have for every modern, independently minded household. Protect your family's safety during an emergency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com today to purchase your ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system or call 1 888 253 3139. 